What's the difference between the Columbian Exchange and the Triangle Trade? Find out. Alright, so the inciting event in both of these trades is Columbus's discovery of the New World. When he found the New World, he kicked off a series of migrations back and forth between both worlds, between goods and people. For more information, check out my video right here about the Columbian Exchange. But to get to the difference, you got to understand how they are both similar. The Columbian Exchange moved things from the Old World to the New World and vice versa. It's used as a general term to describe the exchange between Old and New Worlds. The Triangle Trade also involved an exchange of goods and people, but includes a new element that the Columbian Exchange doesn't have. Manufactured goods and Africa. See, Europeans were discovering vast natural resources in the New World, but these resources don't actually account for much until something's done with them. The exception being like rare metals, jewels, gold, silver, stuff like that. Those sell pretty well even in a raw state. But a chopped down tree, tobacco, sugar cane, and cotton, they don't actually do much in their natural state. Tobacco has to be dried out, cut, and they're shredded and packaged for sale. Sugar cane was often grown and turned into products like sugar crystals or molasses in the same place. However, once the sugar is processed, it has to be sent to Europe to be turned into things that people want. Sugar is nice, but it's not especially useful unless it's made into something. Cotton followed the same suit. Raw cotton is a fluffy plant that isn't easy to wear. Cotton has to be spun into thread and woven into fabric and then made into clothing. Europe at the time was the only place that had these early industrial hubs to change these products from raw materials into manufactured goods. Well, we got products. Now what? Sell them. Sell them to anyone who will buy them. The first option was sell them back to the colonies that produce the raw materials in the first place. They want clothes and furniture and food. They're so busy harvesting the raw materials that they can't afford the pro to make the product as well. So they buy it back from Europe. Another way Europe cashed in was involving selling manufactured goods to Africa. Warning! We've ended the fun, happy part of today's video in favor of respecting the hardships we're about to discuss. These goods were traded and sold to purchase slaves who were then sent back to America to work for producing the materials for shipment to Europe, where the manufactured goods would be then sold to Africa. It's a big cycle, but in a triangular shape. Africans that were brought across to America were loaded on ships and sent across the Middle Passage. This was an extremely grueling trek across open ocean. These ships could hold hundreds of Africans traded into bondage. On this trek, upwards of 20% of slaves would die before setting foot on American soil. Those brought over consisted of men, women, and children. Some families watched their family members die and have their body thrown over the bow of the ship. The survivors face a fate arguably worse, working for years without regard for safety or well-being. These people were no longer considered people. They were livestock that could handle direct instruction. This trade led to an expansion into a type of economic free-for-all called mercantilism. Essentially, mercantilism is where a home colony expands around the world, building colonies that will then create economic opportunities for the home country. Many of these colonies were powered and fueled by slave labor. The home countries grew rich and powerful, but the lands they occupied were devastated under a rule of law that viewed the inhabitants as a subhuman were at best second-class citizens. While the Columbian Exchange gets the fame for expanding, uniting, and altering the planet, the Triangle Trade economically and socially shaped the globe for centuries to come, allowing for civilized countries to grow rich and prosper while forcing others into subjugation while toiling for another's benefit. An expectation that a satellite nation should hold and support homage to the homeland causes the stress and pressures directly leading to the American Revolution. We'll see how this plays out in a later video. All right, guys, if you found this video educational, entertaining, or both, please give it a like and a subscribe. Leave a comment down at the bottom if you have any questions or any suggestions for upcoming topics.